Okay, so um, for the past 20 years or so, um, I've had this uh, rather simple goal of trying to create an illustration of a significant portion of a cell, okay? And um, so in that illustration, trying to include everything, all the macromolecules in the right place, at the right concentration, the right size, interacting in the right ways. Um, and you know, in, in this goal, I, I have a bit of a luxury. Um, I get to ignore all of the challenges that are facing us here in this room today, right, because I'm creating these things by hand, so I don't have to worry about coming up with a data set and all of that. But there is one big challenge um, that, that, that I'm faced with with these, um, and that is uh, digging up the, um, the data, the scientific support to, um, to come up with what all those shapes are and where they should be and what concentration. And so um, that kind of data includes a bunch of, uh, a bunch of data from different sources. Um, so up at the top, going to microscopy um, to, uh, to look at the overall ultral structure, down at the bottom, uh, looking at atomic structures to make sure everything is the right shape. And then maybe the, more, the most challenging part is that uh, meso scale in between of figuring out how to put all those individual molecules in their proper places um, uh, in the ultrastructure. So I, I thought if in my 10 minutes here, I would just walk through one of the illustrations and show um, some of the places where I went to find this data, some of the problems I've had, um, and, and some of the sources that, that are really amazing for this. Um, so I'll use this as the example, a, a picture of the neuromuscular synapse. Um, and so when I, I set out to do this picture, I had a few, a few goals for what I wanted to get out of this. Um, I wanted to show the whole uh, synaptic cycle. Pointer here. Somewhere. That was it. inside. Oh, it's right in the pot in front of me. Ah, there you go. Open your eyes. Great. Um, so starting up here with a synaptic vesicle, dumping the uh, acetylcholine down into the cleft, down to the receptors at the bottom, um, acetylcholine ester esterase, um, breaking it down here, and then this tiny little uh, pump taking the pieces back into the cell. And so as I was researching this, I mean, that's everything that's important for the synaptic cycle, right, for sending the signal across. All the rest of this stuff, all of this infrastructure is there to make sure that everything, that those few pieces are in the right place at the right time. Um, so I wanted to highlight in this picture as well that there is an enormous infrastructure um, to do that one very simple, uh, simple function. And so starting at the ultrastructural level, uh, of course, the first place to go is to try to dig up uh, um, an EM picture to make sure that we know what the, the overall structure is. And so that painting is just taken from a tiny little piece right here. And I was also very lucky with this particular painting that there was this amazing study of purified synaptic vesicles that basically you could just lift directly out of the publication and it tells um, all of the molecules that are in this, what the concentrations are, what the structures are, if known. That usually isn't the case, um, having a study that's that detailed. The most difficult numbers I've found, or tried to find, are the numbers of the concentrations. Um, and I'm still, for most of these paintings that I'm doing, using these very old numbers from the 80s. Um, and you can see that the ranges in these are pretty huge. Um, for these paintings, it's not that big a problem. Um, so here's an example of, of something drawn at 15% concentration and 25% concentration. So over the paintings, I can slop it in that range. It's going to be more important for you guys when you're doing things that are more quantitative. Um, and then invariably, for, for each different topic, there are going to be a few things where concentrations are, are really nailed down. And these are the things that are functionally very important for the particular um, topic. For instance, the numbers of acetylcholinesterase in this um, in this synapse, um, or the, the amount of uh, the neurotransmitter that's in the vesicle. Really solid numbers for that. But filling in all the stuff around, there's more slop, or more assumptions you have to make. Uh, this is probably the most important kind of information, and probably the most difficult to find. 
um, which is looking at the interactions between the different molecules. And so invariably, I have to go to PubMed and search these things out one at a time, um, trying, hoping that there's going to be a, a biochemical paper somewhere that somebody puts a diagram like this at the back to kind of explain the results. And so you can see this, this diagram is just full of information saying what is bound to what where. But you also have to be really careful with these because these aren't structural biologists drawing these kind of illustrations. Um, so you can see uh, I can't use this really to, to determine the shapes and sizes in, uh, in these diagrams. Otherwise, my actin monomers would be about the same size as the lipid head, head groups here, which could be a problem. But it, um, it definitely is a way to pin down the, um, the spatial topology of, of all the molecules. The easiest part of the whole task is coming up with structures. And the reason for that is that the protein data bank is so incredibly amazing these days. You can find anything you want. And if you can't, again, jumping out to the literature, finding electron micrographs for big floppy things like laminins, or maybe even going to Uniprot um, for molecular weights to make sure that things are, are about the right size. Um, also, one of the most difficult th things I've had to find information on is the glycosylation, what these uh, wiggly chains actually look like. Um, it, and that's probably a, um, uh, because it's so difficult to, to come up with that information. Um, and then I'll just finish up with just a quick um, description of actually the fun part of the whole process. Once you have all this data in place, you get to draw the picture. Um, and so uh, I've uh, come up with a few things in the, the style that I've used over the year. Um, I use this cross-sectional metaphor, um, just like you're taking a piece of that cell and holding it at, uh, um, at arm's length instead of a more immersive fly-through kind of approach. I like these cross-sections because it's real easy to compare the size of actin to acetylcholine and explore through the, the picture without having any problems with uh, um, scale relationships um, due to perspective. Um, I use a real simple uh, color scheme that uh, separates the different functional compartments, the cytoplasm of the two cells in blue, membrane associated things in green, and stuff outside in a, a, another color. Um, and then there's a lot of artistic license that goes in uh, into these illustrations. Um, for instance, in this illustration, I've rearranged things so that I can have everything that I want to show, the whole cycle. You might not, um, if you were to take a random um, section of a cell, you might not have all the pieces you need to tell that story. Um, and then more importantly for the um, 3D kind of, yeah, 3D um, simulation is I play a lot of games with the um, orientation of molecules in the illustrations, in particular anything that's long and fibrous, to make sure that nothing is coming up and being clipped by the, the clipping plane. So you can see all the actin filaments are, are parallel with the plane of the page. All of the, the laminin um, and collagen fibers are running parallel to the plane of the page. It makes for a clear illustration, but of course it's, that's a big, um, a, a lot of artistic license that probably would not, if you were doing this in 3D and trying to come up with a predictive tool, that probably wouldn't be a valid thing to do. Necessary if you want to, to make something that's visually um, easy to understand, though. Okay, so um, I've, uh, I've committed to doing a, a series of articles in BAMBED talking about these kind of issues, where, where all this data is coming from and some of the assumptions I've made. And I think uh, for this group in particular, uh, they wouldn't be so much useful for um, being a place to look for, for where I found data, but more to look for all the pieces that are missing. Um, since there, you need a lot of diverse data to support this kind of thing, and there's still, still lots of things that need to be done. Thank you.